Great. So uh, welcome to our ninth session. This is our second last session together. Can you believe it? We've been through nine sessions already. Uh, you are very, very welcome. Just to remind everyone of what we've covered so far, we're on the last of our Birding ID webinars. Next week, we have our last webinar on how to guide birders. And for that, we've got a global birding guide extraordinaire, Dr. Daniel Dankwitz from Rock Jumper Birding. So very excited to have him on. He's just about landing back in South Africa from Madagascar on his latest trip. So quite a nice lifestyle. <laughs> um, but today we're going to be covering the birds of the claim Karoo. Uh, this is a project that uh, includes both the claim Karoo and the garden route and is designed for aspirant and uh, current tour guides who want to get into the birding or AV tourism space. But as always, everyone is welcome from within and without the region. And whether you are an aspirant guide, current guide, or just someone who wants to learn a little bit more. Then these are our project partners. So uh, I'm from BirdLife South Africa. I'm running our AV tourism project. And then we have our local activator, uh, Roland Fulvac from Intoto Garden Root Retreat in Sedgefield. And then our funders, the Western Cape Government or uh, Department of Economic Development and Tourism, and then the Kharitz Cluster Biosphere Reserve. Today, we go back to our fan favorite, Justin. Uh, he's going to be presenting his fourth and last webinar. And uh, you know, I don't think he needs an introduction at this point, but he's one of our real up-and-comers on the garden route. He's grown up in the area, and he's also spent a lot of time exploring in the Little Karoo or the Klang Karoo. So we are going to enjoy his expertise today uh, for one last time. And I'm going to bring it up now. He has pre-recorded this one. Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is doing fantastic today. For those who don't know me, I'm Justin Ponder. I'm sure Andrew's already introduced me. But I am happy to be presenting for you guys today. So this is going to be Birds of the Klein Karoo. Now the Klein Karoo, it spans a huge area of the garden route all the way from the Otaniko Mountains, or in between the Otaniko Mountains and the Swartberg Mountains, covering pretty much the entire extent of the Garden Route. Now, despite being such a large area, it is also an extremely dry and arid area, so the bird diversity is generally not going to be as high as, say, in the coastal regions of the Garden Route. However, the birds of the Klenkaroo are also just as incredible and have a lot of endemics as well. A lot of the birds of the Klein Karoo are LBJs and little brown small species, which does make it a lot harder to identify them, but it is very possible. So I'm going to be going through some of those species with you today. So the aim of this webinar is to showcase some of those species and teach the identification features of those birds that are found in the Klein Karoo region of the garden route. This is not a full list of species that can be seen in the dry areas, but rather just a grouping or compilation of some of the more regular species that you might bump into at one point or another in the Klein Karoo. So just to go over again the region that we are looking at, this is the garden route. And the Klein Karoo region spans most of the top section of the garden route. Let's get straight into our species. So first up, we have a regular, probably the most regular raptor of the Klein Karoo, the pale chanting goshawk. So the pale chanting goshawk is one I'm sure many of you are familiar with. It's a quite a large grey bird that you'll often see perched on telephone lines. Uh, it's got bright pink, or most of the bull is bright pink, and then the legs are also like a dull pinkish. It's quite a lot larger than the next species we're going to be looking at, which is the Gaybar goshawk. So the Gaybar goshawk is a smaller occipiter, but it also has those pink bull and the pink, the pink legs, although it is not as bright as from the pale chancy goshawk. It's also grey completely, although the back is darker than that of the pale trancing goshawk. 
the booted eagle is the probably the most regular uh, migrant raptor in the clan Karoo. Uh, the booted eagle is also our smallest eagle in the region. So it's a lot smaller than any of the other raptors or eagles that we'll find in the clan Karoo. So the diagnostic features of the booted eagle are these dark primaries and secondaries, which is seen in both the pale form, which is pictured here, and the darker form, which is similar to this one, but more brown all over. The, the pale form is the most common, so that's the one I'm focusing on here. The pale form also has a dark cap and back. South African shellduck is the most regular duck along any dams or watercourses in the Klein Karoo. Uh, it's a lot bigger than most of your normal ducks, and it also has that black ball. Uh, the diagnostic features are the chestnut all over, or the rich rufousy coloring, and then the gray head in the male, or white head in the female. The Ludwig's Bustard is also a, quite a nomadic species, so not a migrant like the booted eagle, but a species that will move into the area after good rains. But that being said, the, and they can be in huge numbers after good rains. So the Ludwig's Bustard is quite a big species, uh, stands over a meter tall, so around about your hip height, and then it has this uh, dark head and neck. Double banded Corsa, on the other hand, is a lot smaller, and it is more the size of a plover. Uh, the diagnostic features of the double banded corsa are, as the name suggests, the two dark black bands around the lower neck. It's got quite a, a thin head and neck, but it has long bluish gray legs and a well marked browny back, like that in the like pictured here in the photo. The Namaqua dove is the Klein Karoo's most regular dove species. Uh, it's quite distinctive being with this long tail that it has and in flight it'll have these rufous wings. Up close you'll see it has a yellow tipped bull and then a black face in the male. In flight as well you might see that it has a bit of barring on the rump. The pied starling is another very regular species in the garden route. Uh, compared to other starlings, it's quite a large bird and also very gregarious, which means it'll, you'll find it in big family groups. The pied starling uh, usually has quite a pale eye. You can't see it too well in this photo, unfortunately, as this is a younger bird, but it usually has quite a pale white eye. And then it has a large bull that has a bright yellow lower base. Overall, the bird is quite dark brown but it does have a white vent, and in flight it has paler wings. The Acacia Pied Barbet is a species you're likely to find in uh, thorn thickets and acacia, uh, acacia patches, as the name suggests. The Acacia Pied Barbet is diagnostic with this red and yellow forehead, uh, and the rest of the face is striped black and white. Overall, the bird is quite black and white, however it has lots of yellow flecks on the back and wings. So the mouse birds is actually an endemic uh, uh, genus to southern Elf, to Africa, and the Klein Karoo has two regular species. It actually has, well, it has three regular species, but it has two species that are more commonly found in the Klein Karoo as well. The first of those species is the red-faced mouse bird. As the name suggests, it has a very red face. Uh, the whole mouse bird family is usually quite brown and has this long tail. The next mouse bird is the white-backed mouse bird. Now the white-backed mouse bird, the diagnostic feature that you would look out for, is this pale, uh, pale whitish bull with a black tip. Another diagnostic feature is the bright pink legs, which are actually very noticeable. 
overall the bird is quite a lot paler than our other mouse birds and it has more of like a warm grayish brown color than a uh, gray in total but it does have the usual crest and long tail of the mouse bird family the karoo chat and now we're moving on to more of our lbjs so the first one we're going to look at is the karoo chat the karoo chat is quite easy to identify as it is completely gray all over and then it also has these white outer tail feathers which you'll notice are you don't see in many other chat species now the mountain wheat ear is a tough bird since it's quite variable so the plumage it it can be such uh, it can be based off of this photo as well it can be similar to this but it can also be completely gray so generally what you're going to look out for is a very thrush like appearance although it doesn't take after the thrushes in habitat so you'll find this bird uh, in lots of different rocky mountains open fields near rocky mountains and just generally uh, rocky mountainous areas usually though the bird is quite black and white like this with a white shoulder patch now we're moving on to our actual thrushes. The Karoo thrush is the most, or one of the most regular thrush species in the Klein Karoo. Uh, this, one, this bird is diagnostic in which it has a very orangey yellow ball. And overall the bird is quite brown. Although on the belly it is a lot more of like a warm orangey color. The Karoo scrub robin is also a very, very common species that I'm sure many of you have encountered at one point or another, but being the LBJ that it is, it is tough to identify. So the diagnostic features that you need to look out for in the Karoo scrub robin are the white eyebrow and the white moustachial stripe, which isn't as easy to see in this photo, but it is usually a lot more prominent. Overall, the bird is also very brown but the underparts are tinged a little bit orange. And then in flight, it has these white tail feathers, which are also very, very easy to notice. The Karoo Lark is another one of our LPJs, and now we're moving on to the more tough LPJs. And this bird is found in more distinct, proper Karoo habitat. So this isn't something you're likely to find closer to town. So the Karoo lock is diagnostic in which it has this shorter thin bowl, whereas the other locks that we've looked at in previous sessions have a lot more of a thicker bowl. Overall, the bird is very, um, almost has like a reddish coloring to it, like a reddish brown. But the chest is a lot paler, almost like a white, and it's very well streaked with black. The spike-heeled lark is another one of our larks, probably a lot less common than the Karoo lark, but also uh, often encountered, especially in the more open Karoo areas. So the spike-heeled lark has a lot longer of a bill compared to the Karoo lark, and then it also has a very short tail, which is diagnostic. Overall, the bird is quite orangey, if I can put it that way. Uh, but it's also very marked so it's as you can see on the back here it's not a plain bird it also has a white throat a nicholson's puppet so the nicholson's puppet is one of the toughest species to identify but it is also an extremely regular species that is often encountered so it's often confused with larks but overall the bird is a lot more slender than a lark. It has a lot longer legs as well. To differentiate it from other uh, puppet species, you need to take a look at the bull, which is usually or which is always uh, pink on the lower mandible. The chest is a bit a lot warmer of like a buffyish off-white color, and it is quite well streaked, especially at the top of the chest. The tail feathers or the outer tail feathers are also uh, buffy instead of white, which is what the African puppet has. The fairy flycatcher. So this is actually one of our smallest species in the garden route. 
uh, or one of our lightest, if I put it that way. There's a very cute bird, which this photo does not do it justice. So the fairy flycatcher has a black face mask, which is bordered with a white eyebrow and then a white moustachial stripe as well. It has a white wing bar, although overall the bird is quite uh, grey, although the wings are almost black, and then the upper parts of the bird are also a lot darker than the underparts. Uh, the photo doesn't show it, but there's also a little bit of a pinkish tinge to the belly, which is very cute. The Pred Batis can often be confused with the Fairy Flycatcher, but it is a lot more of a rounder bird, so it's not as slender as the Fairy Flycatcher. It also has a yellow eye. Across the chest, it has this big uh, band, a black band, although in females, it is usually orangey. Greyback cysticula is another very tough species to identify. So we've covered some other cysticulas in the previous sessions, but the greyback cysticula is more often found in our drier Karuri regions. It has a very well marked back, and then it has the same rufous cap, wings, and tail that the other cysticulas have but it is a lot less marked, also a lot less bright. So it's more of like a pale rufousy color instead of a bright rufous. The rufous eared warbler is another very regular species, especially in our more open Karoo fields. So as the name suggests, it has a rufous ear, and then it also has a white throat with a black bar. Overall, the bird is quite browny greyish, and it has a very long tail compared to our other warblers and other open Karoo specials. This is also one of our near endemic species. The Namaqua warbler is similar in shape and size to the Rufus Yed warbler, but this one's found specifically around reeded uh, vegetation, so along river courses and around dams with lots of reeds. The Namaqua warbler is also quite similar to the Karuprinia, which we have looked at in a previous uh, session, although the chest is a, has a lot lighter streaking than the Karuprinia. Overall, the bird or the back of the bird is quite brown, uh, like a warm brownish color, whereas the chest and throat is white. It also has quite a long tail. The chestnut vented tip babbler or chestnut vented warbler is also quite common along thickets and often in towns and gardens. The chestnut vented warbler overall is quite gray, although the throat is a lot a bit or a little bit paler and streaky it also has the same coloration on the shoulders here as the name suggests it has a chestnut vent now this is a lot more of a smaller bird but it is very similar to its sister species the layard's warbler or layard's tit babbler so the layard's tit babbler as i said it's quite similar to the chestnut vented tit babbler but it has a white vent instead of the chestnut vent. Overall, the bird is quite pale gray as well, and it has a slightly less streaked throat than the chestnut vented tit babbler. The yellow-bellied eremobula, now we're moving on to very small species. So these are species that without a pair of binoculars, uh, one might struggle to identify. So the yellow-bellied eromomola, as the name suggests, it has a yellowy belly, whereas the rest of the bird is quite uh, pale grey or brownish grey. has a slightly longer bill than other birds this size, and it has a short tail as well. A very similar species to the yellow-bellied eromomola, and perhaps more common, is the long-billed crombeck. So the long-billed crombeck, it also has that long bill, and then it, but instead of having the yellow belly, it has a much more of a warm, buffy, brown belly. It also has a much shorter tail. 
the back of the bird is a lot more grey as well. The Cape Penduline tit is also a very small species that is common along the open fields of the Clan Karoo. So the Cape Penduline tit is uh, on the forehead of the bird is quite a little bit black and white, whereas the rest of the back and head is more of a grayish color. It has a lot more of a shorter, uh, thicker bill than the previous two species and it has a longer tail as well. The red-billed quillia is a very common and very gregarious bird. So this is a bird that you'll often find in big flocks. Uh, the diagnostic features of the red-billed quillia are, as the name suggests, it has that bright red bill, which is easy to see, especially in the males in breeding season but you can also find it in non-breeding males and females. Uh, but the bird is quite uh, variable as well, especially in breeding plumage, but the most common form of it is pictured here, where it has that black face mask with reddish pink uh, marks as well, just below and above the mask. It's a very small, chunky bird. Cape bunting is also a very common species. Uh, and it's diagnostic in which it has this black and white streaked head. Now we have two other bunting species that are a lot more uncommon, so I haven't mentioned them, but both of those species have colored chests, whereas the cape bunting has the plain brownish gray chest. The back of the cape bunting and the wings are also a lot more rufous and it's got a well-marked back. So moving on to our canaries now, uh, the Clan Karoo is full with canaries and seed eaters. So I have here listed the, mo the three most common seed eaters which you are likely to find. Uh, first up, perhaps the easiest to identify, especially for males, is the yellow canary. So the male yellow canary, as the name suggests, is bright yellow. And then uh, to differentiate it from other canary species, you'll have to look at the smaller bull. So the females of the yellow canary are a lot more brown, but it has that same small bull as the male. The white-throated canary, on the other hand, has a much larger heavy bull, and then it has uh, some white, a uh, white throat, and then a white eyebrow as well. Overall, the bird is quite plain brown, and it has a yellow rump. The black-headed canary is uh, also a nomadic species. So you'll have years where you almost never see this bird, and then you'll have years where you can't stop seeing them. So as the name suggests, it has a black head, a very dark contrasting with the rest of the body. Uh, it also has some black markings on the chest, although that is variable and sometimes it doesn't have that. The back and top of the wings and tail of the bird are more of a chestnutty color, while the chest and belly are usually white. But as I said, sometimes it does have the black markings as shown in this photo. The cardinal woodpecker is the most common woodpecker in the Clan Karoo. Uh, as with most woodpeckers, it has that same red crest, uh, which is brown in females, but to differentiate it from other woodpeckers, it is a much more of a smaller bird and has a thinner, sharp bill. The back of the cardinal woodpecker is uh, more of a browny color, but it has a lot of yellow barring, as shown in this photo. So the last bird we're going to look at is the pearl-breasted swallow. So the pearl-breasted swallow is also a migrant species, or partial migrant species, so it is more common during the summer months. Now this is a bird that is mostly seen flying, but uh, I've never been able to photograph it in flight, so I've just used a photo that I've taken of it perched. So as the name suggests, it has a very pearly white chest, whereas the back and cap of the bird are more of an iridescent navy blue, 
so it shines quite nicely in the sun. Awesome, and that brings us to the end. Uh, thank you to everyone for joining. I think you're almost done now with your, the bird identification sessions. We're almost at the end of it. Uh, just to recap quickly, this was a list or a compilation of birds regularly found in the arid Plain Karoo regions of the Garden Route. If you have any questions or queries, I'm sure Andrew would love to answer them for you. Otherwise, you are welcome to send me an email at uh, my email address is listed over here. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Okay, so that was it. That was Justin's sessions on the birds of the Clan Karoo. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's one of my absolute favorite birding areas, and I think one of the most underappreciated areas, uh, not just in the garden route, but also countrywide for birding. It is fantastic. It has all of these Karoo specials at your fingertips in easy reach, easy to get to, easy to find. So a real birding gem that we are uncovering as part of this broader project. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if there are any questions, you can put them in the Q&A box. I don't see any there just yet. I do see a question in the chat box um, from Olivia, just um, asking about what does Buffy mean? So Buffy is, um, we talked about Rufus the other day, that's more of sort of a rusty red. Buffy is a sort of lighter shade of, of that orangey red color. So it's sort of an offish reddish orange color. Uh, so that's what Buffy means. Um, I, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, you know, for instance, larks, maybe um, the Karoo lark is almost Rufus. It's quite a deep red but other larks may be called buffy. So they're sort of a, a brownish with a tinge of orange or red. So thanks for the question, that's great. Okay, I don't see any other questions. So the QR code is on your screen now. There still seem to be some of you that are struggling with QR codes. If you have a smartphone, um, you can just open up your camera app, basically point it at the QR code and it should pick it up and give you a link away to the quiz. Otherwise, just wait for me to send the follow-up email in about an hour's time or as soon as I can get the YouTube clip to upload and uh, then I'll send that along with the quiz link as well as I always do. And then lastly, just join us on Thursday for our final webinar in the series. Can you, can you believe we're at our 10th uh, webinar next uh, Thursday? So as I mentioned, this will be on how to guide birders. It will be a bit of a focus on some of the quirks, some of the characteristics of the the birding market and how that plays out um, in reality when you're on a birding experience or maybe tourism experience. So this is valuable not just for guides, but also for anyone that interacts uh, in a front-facing role uh, towards tourists, whether you work in a tourism management role or in an accommodation or any other sort of tour guiding aspect. Uh, this is gonna be something worth knowing. Uh, and for those of you that are just birders, uh, I'm sure you'll see yourselves in a lot of uh, what Daniel's going to be talking about. And I'm sure it'll be interesting and informative for, for everyone regardless. So I hope to see you there on Thursday. It'd be great to have a nice crowd of people to round out our session of webinars. All right. Thanks, everyone. And I'll see you on Thursday. Cheers.